Hey guys, Corey with Palmetto Battery Pros, and today we're going to be doing a lithium conversion on this EasyGo RXV. We are going to be installing the Bolt Energy 51 volt 105 amp hour lithium golf cart battery and installation kit. So stick around and we will go through it step by step. All right, I'll quickly run through everything that comes with the 51 volt, 105 amp hour Bolt Energy Lithium Golf Cart Battery. So for this RXV, we're gonna be using the standard kit instead of the professional kit. So with the standard kit, of course, you're gonna receive Bolt Energy's 51105 uh, Lithium Golf Cart Battery. Comes with the Bluetooth adapter and also your dash mounted LCD meter. This is the 15 amp onboard charger and the charge receptacle replacement and cover plate. This is the connection piece that will connect the charger to the battery. Then you have your 30 amp 12 volt reducer. So there's only 48 volts at the battery terminal. So for all your lights and accessories, we're gonna have to reduce that voltage down. And also included is Bolt's bag of goodies, which comes with zip ties, eyelets, uh, stickers, there's user manuals and installation guides. So that's a really nice touch there. As always, the first thing we're going to do is make sure our golf cart is off and we are in the tow position here. Next, disconnect and remove the lead acid batteries. And after that, you can go ahead and clean this battery tray out because we're not going to have the corrosion issues. We have cleaned the battery tray. And now we will go ahead and remove the old charge receptacle. And to do that, uh, these are rivets that held the OEM receptacle in place. So you'll need to get a drill bit, drill those rivets out. And then you can remove um, the charge receptacle. But on the back side, you will need to disconnect the reed switch, which is this little blue wire. And hold on to this guy because we're going to be uh, cutting it and putting an eyelet on it and running it to the positive post on the lithium battery and that will bypass the reed switch and allow the cart to work. So now you can remove the old charging cables, remove these metal tabs here, insert the Bolt Energy Charge Receptacle and cover plate. All right, so I will drill some holes down here and use these holes up here and nut and bolt the uh, cover plate to the cart. And then I will use the self-tapping screws provided to secure the receptacle to the cover plate. Now that our charge receptacle is installed, we can go ahead and move on to installing the 12 volt reducer and the onboard charger. And you can put them anywhere. You can utilize this space under the driver. If you have space behind the battery. I'm gonna put both of them behind the battery. So go ahead and secure them down to the tray using nut and bolt or self-tapping screws. All right, next we are going to go ahead and plug in our charger input. And we will make sure it gets in there nice and tight. And we're going to run this back around up underneath the battery tray and secure it uh, up underneath the battery tray where it's not hanging down below the frame so it doesn't get pulled or tugged. And then we will run it back into this area and plug it into our charger receptacle. Okay, so here's the charger input wire here. And I'm going to plug it into the back of my receptacle. Next, go ahead and hook up your 12 volt reducer wiring harness. So I'll quickly go through all the wires in the 12 volt reducer wiring harness. The black and yellow is your 48 volt supply. So we're gonna be extending them, putting an eyelet on them and putting them to the positive and negative post on the battery. The red is our 12 volt supply out and we'll hook this up to all of our 12 volt accessories and our lights. The blue is a constant 12 volt supply for memory on radios. Uh, we don't have one on this card, so we're just going to cap it off. And the green, we are going to extend it and we will be running this side to the uh, solenoid. I have extended the green wire out of the 12 volt reducer and I ran it down here and back around and secured it to this main harness and it turned to red. I extended it with red wire, so this is the green. So we use the provided eyelet 
and we put that on the green wire. And then we find the controller side of our solenoid. So this is the battery side, the cable that goes to our main positive post. And here is the controller side. So we're gonna put the green from our 12 volt reducer, the green wire, we'll go ahead and secure it down. So now when the cart is in the on position, the 12 volt supply will be activated. Now that we kind of have everything where we want it and most of our wires already extended, uh, we're ready to go ahead and drop the battery in place. So we need to go ahead and get the mounting bracket set. Okay, so this is what the mounting brackets are gonna look like. And it's gonna be closer to the passenger side. And I went ahead and drilled my holes and used the provided mounting hardware to secure them down. And now I can move the mounting brackets forward and back uh, to get it where I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery on top and space these perfectly. And when I get them where I want, I will tighten the mounting hardware down. I have secured the battery to the brackets and it is very secure. And now that we have everything kind of sorted and installed in the battery tray, let's go ahead and start running some wires. Uh, first is our LCD meter. We're going to need to get this up to the dash area. So go ahead and unplug it, unscrew it and unplug it here. Set this to the side. All right, now you have the LCD wiring harness. Let's go ahead and plug it in to the display port. Next, while we're over here, let's go ahead and plug in our Bluetooth adapter. It has a magnet on the back, so we'll just kind of set it to the battery. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in to the BT port. And we'll just secure this to the top of the battery. Now we will run the LCD wiring harness up underneath the battery tray and secure it along the way and run it up to the dash area. The customer wants his LCD meter installed right here. We're gonna remove this whole panel and it's really easy. There are three of these little, they're not really nuts. They are just kind of hold the dash panel in place. Uh, so go ahead and pop those out. Now there's one, two, three. And once you do that, you can just go ahead and kind of gently pop the whole panel out of place. And now we can remove the four Phillips head screws that hold this panel in place. And to make it easier on yourself, let's go ahead and unplug the USB ports. And now this panel is free and we can set it down and drill our hole for the LCD meter a little bit easier. Now that I found my center point, I marked it, and I'm gonna use my two and one sixteenths hole saw to make a perfect circle there for the LCD meter. If you can't find a two and one sixteenths, a two inch hole saw will work. You just may have to, uh, you know, scrape the inside to widen it out just a little bit. So here's our LCD meter installed, and we have the bracket secured to the back side with the wing nut. Once you fish your LCD wiring harness through the dash and plug it into the back of the LCD meter, we can go ahead and zip tie and hide this slack here and replace your dash panel. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and start hooking everything up to the battery and finishing the job. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take our charger output wire from the output side of the charger, and we are going to plug in the battery connection piece. Now we're ready to go ahead and hook everything up to the positive post of the battery. And we are going to go smallest to biggest, the biggest touching the terminal. So our smallest item is going to be the blue wire from on the back of our charge receptacle. This is the read switch bypass. It's going to need 48 volts to close that switch. Next up is the 48 volt supply to our 12 volt reducer. After that is going to be the positive from our onboard charger connection piece. And the final item is our main positive cable from our uh, solenoid. So once you get all those together, you can go ahead and get them to the post and get them tightened down. Using your 13 millimeter wrench, go ahead and tighten it down. You want it tight, not too tight, but no wiggle room. Last thing you can do is put your terminal protector in place. 
And now we can move on to the negative side. Same thing on the negative side. We're going to go smallest to biggest. And there's a couple extra items on the negative side that should have been hooked up to your lead acid batteries. But I'll quickly run through it. The smallest item is our 48 volt supply to our 12 volt reducer. After that is the ground. It's the factory harness ground. That was to your lead acid batteries. Next we have the negative wire for our USB ports. After that, the onboard charger connection. And the last item, of course, is our main negative cable, which runs uh, from the negative post to the controller. Now we'll put our terminal protector in place to prevent cross-post arcing. So now we can do some final wire management and zip tying and securing everything down here. And we'll put the paneling back in place. Okay, so the customer uh, wanted us to install this fuse block. It's a 12-volt fuse block. So on the output side, as far as all of our lights and everything goes, um, this is the 12-volt supply from our 12-volt reducer. So we have it going to the positive post on the fuse block. And then here on the bottom is the ground, the negative, and you can run it to the B negative on the battery, but I just tapped in here to the negative wire on the uh, 12 volt reducer. So now when the card is on, we have 12 volts coming here and you can see we have our lights hooked up here with a fuse in between. And if the customer wanted to add any 12 volt accessories moving forward, instead of cutting and crimping any of this wire, he would just add eyelets and put them to the open uh, channels here on the fuse block. Now we are ready to test cart operation. Let's go ahead and turn the battery on. The power button will illuminate and your LCD meter will come to life. Next, we can put the cart in run. Let's go ahead and put it in forward. Lightly hit the accelerator. Great, we have card operation. Okay, so the battery came at 48% state of charge. So we're gonna go ahead and max charge it for the customer. We're gonna take our heavy extension cord. It's a 10 gauge. And we're gonna open up our charge receptacle and plug our extension cord in. This will activate the onboard charger, which will run a complete charge cycle and shut off when finished. All right, guys, that's it for the installation video of the Bolt Energy 51 volt 105 amp hour mini into an EasyGo RXV. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Also, we are an authorized dealer for Bolt Energy USA. So if you'd like to purchase one of these batteries, please call us weekdays, 9 to 5 Eastern. You can also shop online at palmettobatterypros.com. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. We have more lithium unboxing and installation videos coming out. So we hope to see you next time. We appreciate you watching. Thanks, y'all.